You've heard the slogans. Free people, stop! The chanting crowds. Israel, the passion in their voices. We demand an end to the colonization of Palestine. But in some places, these words can cost you your job and maybe even land you in jail. So why are these slogans so controversial? And what do they really mean? Number one. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. This is one of the oldest slogans in the pro-Palestinian movement and one of the most common chants at pro-Palestine protests today. Let's break it down, starting with the first part, from the river to the sea. A bunch of videos have gone viral of pro-Israel activists going up to protesters and asking them, from what river to what sea? What's the river? Um, uh, <laughs> I forgot the river's the name, sea? but the sea is the Red Sea. It's, I think it's the Black Sea and the river on the other side of Gaza. From the uh, mountains to the sea. From the mountains to the sea. A recent survey showed that less than half of the college students who support the use of the slogan know that it's referring to the Mediterranean Sea and the Jordan River. What's in between these two? The West Bank and Gaza, generally referred to as the Palestinian territories. Oh, and the entirety of the state of Israel. And with it, 8 million Jews. So all of this area will be free. Free how? Free from what? Free from racism, free from oppression. But what's the Arabic version of the slogan written there? Min al -mia al -mia Palestina Arabia. From water to water, Palestine will be Arab. And some versions of these chants actually replace the word Arab with Muslim, which might be surprising until you understand the origins of the slogan. It first popped up in the 1960s with the Palestine Liberation Organization, or PLO, a militant group formed by Palestinians aimed at destroying Israel and replacing it with the Palestinian state. What to do with the Jews living there? At best, second-class citizens. At worst, The PLO's original vision is not just old history. In its rally toolkit, the pro-Palestinian group In Our Lifetime recommends the use of the Arabic version to protesters, along with several other slogans. Which brings us to Number 2. In Our Lifetime is one of the leading organizations promoting pro-Palestine protests around the U.S. Their rally toolkit has a bunch of recommended slogans that you can get the crowd chanting on your college campus. Most of them are in English, a few are in Arabic with translations, and then there's this one in Arabic but no English. <laughs> Luckily, we have Google Translate and there is no God but Allah. The martyr is the beloved of God. Say Allah and raise your voice and we will free her or we will die. With our soul and with our blood, we will redeem you, O Palestine. This chant is very heavy and it reveals an underlying distinction between the two ideologies that are at war in Gaza. One ideology glorifies death, sees death as holy, sacred, and the loftiest goal. And don't get me wrong, I'm not talking about Islam, but radical jihadist versions of it. The other ideology in this war is built on the foundation of a single imperative, choose life. I have put before you life and death, blessing and curse. Choose life. For thousands of years, Judaism stood as an anomaly in a world that sacrificed humans, whether to their gods or to the gladiator pits. Sometimes it seems like nothing's changed. Number three. Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Now this one's easy breezy. It's two words you could throw it around, which makes it one of the most popular. You'll see it on dozens of signs, sometimes mixed in with other slogans. But when you ask what it means, you get a lot of different answers. So let's start with Palestine. While you might think it's referring to the territory of the state of Palestine, the tricky thing is that there's never been a state of Palestine. Historically, Palestine refers to Israel, the Palestinian territories, and their neighbor, Jordan, where 50 to 60% of the population is Palestinian. But Jordan isn't really on board with that definition. For Palestinians, Palestine refers to the land between the river and the sea, which includes the state of Israel. Unlike the last slogan, where free stands for Arab or Muslim, which means free of Jews, there is no popular Arabic version of this slogan. Some say free is just a call for human rights for Palestinians. Others say it's a call for the end of the military occupation of the West Bank and the blockade of Gaza. But there's also some protesters who use it to mean the complete end of the state of Israel and the establishment of a Palestinian state in its place. There's really no way to know what someone means when they're saying free Palestine. Chances are people chanting it don't even know what it means themselves, which is probably what makes it such a popular slogan. Number four. Palestine is our home. Okay, so Palestine, yeah, we know. Settlers can refer to two things. Jews who built the communities in the West Bank after Israel conquered the territory in 1967, or settlers as in colonialist settlers, which refers to the time where European empires sent Europeans to faraway lands to build colonies to settle there. 
The colonies were used to control the local resources, a process that involved marginalizing local indigenous populations. Now, this slogan is based on the idea that Jews in the Holy Land are settlers or are colonizers from Europe, their actual home. The slogan denies that Jews have any historical ties to the land of Israel, and instead they stole the land from Palestinians. But the reality is that there's an ancient Jewish history in the land of Israel, and there's a well-documented, consistent presence of Jews in the area, dating back thousands of years. Now, this bond is not solely historical, it's also deeply embedded in Jewish culture, literature, and religion. Jerusalem itself is mentioned over 600 times in the Hebrew Bible, and it's a focal point in daily and holiday prayers. The Jewish calendar, Jewish traditions, and Jewish holidays are intimately tied to the land's agricultural cycles, reflecting a profound bond with the ancient ancestral homeland. A homeland that Jews have been longing to return to since an actual group of European colonizers kicked them out 2,000 years ago. You may know them as the Roman Empire. But even putting all of that aside, slogans that cast Israelis as white colonizers ignore the over 50% of Israeli Jews whose origins are not from Europe. And on top of all of that, the great irony of this slogan is its similarity to the most common slogan today among Israel supporters. Bring them home! Bring them home! A chant demanding the return of over 250 hostages taken during the October 7th massacre, and the 134 that as of this recording are still being held by Hamas in Gaza. Number five. There is only one solution! Now, we're not going to go into the uncomfortable history of Jews and solutions. So, what does intifada mean? The symbol translation is uprising, but as we know, nothing in this conflict is simple. More specifically, an intifada refers to two events from the recent past, the first and second intifadas. The first intifada was a wave of violent demonstrations and attacks on Israeli soldiers and civilians, with Palestinians carrying out attacks with Molotov cocktails and grenades. The second intifada was a massive wave of shootings and suicide bombing attacks targeting Israeli soldiers and civilians. The attacks targeted everything from cafes to buses to Passover seders. Over 1,000 Israelis and 5,000 Palestinians were killed in the second intifada. According to this slogan, the only solution is an intifada. There's no room for nonviolence, no room for negotiation, no room for understanding or respect. The only solution is a violent revolution. Now, number six. We don't want no two states. We want 48. It's one of the few slogans that doesn't leave much to the imagination. We don't want no two state is referring to the peace process, which envisions the Jewish state and an Arab state living side by side. We Want 48 is referring to a time prior to the establishment of the state of Israel in May of 1948. The slogan envisions a Middle East with no state of Israel whatsoever. It implies that returning to a time before the state of Israel would mean returning to a time when the state of Palestine existed. But if the protesters chanting the slogan actually went back to 1948, they wouldn't find a state of Palestine. They would find the British Mandate of Palestine, a colonialist entity that the Jews of the land fought to remove. And before the British, there was no state of Palestine. There was an area known as Southern Syria, a province in the 400-year-old Ottoman Empire. In fact, if these protesters continue to travel back in time in search of a long-standing independent state in this land, free from the clutches of a larger empire, they're pretty much stuck going all the way back 2,000 years to the kingdom of Judea, just before the Roman Empire colonized it, took it over, and renamed it Palestina.